In this video, we're going to show you how to put inspection rings on a wing. This is a 1932 Waco wing. It's a wood wing. It's all been covered. It's been stitched. It's, it was shrunk beforehand. It's ready to go with inspection rings. We've got five standard inspection rings. And up front, we've got two large inspection areas for attachment of the wing to the attachment points on the fuselage. We'll take a quick walk around, kind of show you a close up of what all the inspection rings are going to look like, and then we'll get started on the process. Let's first take a look at the attachment end of the wing. You'll see there are two inspection panels, large inspection panels, and those are covering an area that will be open for the attachment of the main bolts to the fuselage. We'll take a look at how those fit in there. This particular inspection panel has a ring that's already been glued on. Now, this particular ring has been attached by using the screw holes, and then this is glued onto the fabric. And then once this is all done, we'll go ahead and we'll cover it with a doily. You can see I've made the doily here so it has a one inch overlap to the particular inspection ring that will be glued on. And then we'll go ahead and we'll cut out the middle and fold that inside. The other end, the front of the wing, we've got another smaller inspection opening for the attachment bolts. And that has the same type of inspection ring. This is just an aluminum O2O ring that's been cut and glued on. Again, it's been glued on by using the attachment bolts and then a couple of weights to get that glued firmly onto the fabric. This again will be covered with a doily and the doily is made so that it will have a one inch overlap around. One inch is the correct overlap for our system with any kind of an inspection ring. Next, we have some pretty standard inspection rings. We've got two for bolts that are located inside for wires that may need to be adjusted. In most cases, inspection rings will be put on, covered, and they will never be cut open until such time as that is necessary in the maintenance of the wing. And you can see what I've done is I've traced the ring onto the fabric and I've traced the outline of where the doily is gonna be. And again, the doily is a one inch, one inch doily and that will fit over the area that the inspection ring is going to go on. So in this particular bay, I've got two, one up towards the front and one at about midway in the wing. Moving back towards the area where the lift struts will be attached to the wing, I've got three inspection rings you can see I've got two by the rear attach point, and I've got one up by the front attach point. And again, these are just standard inspection rings where we're gluing on the plastic ring and then we're gluing the doily on top. Let's take a look at the materials you're gonna to need to put on your inspection ring, what you're gonna do before you actually go ahead and glue it on, and the materials and the steps involved. First thing you're gonna to have to do, when you get your inspection ring, you're gonna find there's a very rough knob on here or bump and this is the same bump as when you were made model airplanes as a kid, how the parts were on the little tree, the plastic tree. Same thing is here. This is where it was broken off of the forming tree. You need to sand that off. I just use either some 320 sandpaper or a very fine mill file. Get that completely sanded off. Otherwise, when you put your inspection ring on, you're gonna have quite a bump there. Also, sometimes you might have a little bit of, a, of an indentation in the edge. You can just sand that out. Just get that nice and smooth so that we're gluing that down. With the, obviously with the flat side down and that this curve is nice and smooth. We don't have any rough edges. So I'll set that aside. I've already done that on my inspection ring. So this has been sanded. It's all nice and smooth. I re removed the bump from the tree, the forming tree. So this one's ready to go. I cut my, my doily. And since we're not heat shrinking these on, make sure your doily is cut from a piece of fabric that doesn't have any wrinkles on it. If it's got a big fold across the middle of it, that fold will likely be in there when the, when the inspection ring is all done, and that's gonna be very visible, and you're not gonna want that on your inspection ring. So the inspection ring and the doily, the doily is one inch larger than the inspection ring itself, and that's correct for our system. And you can see I made this one probably a little bit larger, but I think that'll work just fine. Next, I've got it all laid out here. I've drawn my ring. I've drawn where my doily is going to be. I got a fresh, clean brush. I've got full strength glue. And like, I, like I've shown in other videos, I use a wet paper towel to keep the glue from drying uh, in the process of my work. I've got some clean blue paper towels here for cleaning this off. And then I've got a couple other tools. I've got a small plastic squeegee typically used for Bondo work or fiberglass work. And I've got a paint stir stick. I like to learn use the curved end of the of the stir stick or this end here to really work inside and get that inspection ring glued in. Um, it's, not, it's not absolutely important to get it perfect on the first application because once this dries, we're going to come back with some heat and really lock that in nice and tight. If you got a couple little spots with little tiny bubbles, don't be too concerned about that. Okay, the process. We're going to first take the glue 
and full strength glue. I'm going to go ahead and paint just the inside of the ring. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the glue on the ring, on the, on the center where I've drawn where the ring is going to go onto the fabric. We're putting that on full strength, just on the center of the, the actual ring area. Putting that on full strength. And we're going to take the inspection ring and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put glue on the flat side of the inspection ring. That's critical. Don't put it on the curved side. That won't work. We're gluing the flat side down. I know that's obvious, but if I don't mention it, sometimes we can make that simple mistake. Again, we're going to put this on full strength on here. A little more glue. Again, don't worry about getting it on your fingers. It's waterborne, wipes right off. Get it on your shirt, it'll be there forever. All right, so I got that on nice and wet. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna place this on the location and I'm just with my fingers gonna work that down and just kind of smush it in place to get the major bubbles out. And it locks in pretty quickly and doesn't move around. I like the location there. If you were putting on a whole bunch of inspection rings, five or six at a time, you could go ahead and at this point, you could wipe off the excess that is around the outside of your ring. And then you could let this set and come back after you've put on four or five. That's sometimes easier because then the ring won't move around when you're doing the next step. But I'm gonna do it as if I'm just doing one inspection ring, which is very common. Next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on the entire surface, the ring, all the way out to the edge of my drawing where my inspection ring ends and the, the doily goes from the edge of the ring out. So I'm gonna go all the way out in that circle, get this whole area nice and wet. And I'm making sure I'm going to the edge of that drawn area. You'll notice I've got this open area by this lift strut that's going to get covered with more fabric later to, to close up that spot. And I'm choosing to put the inspection ring on first and then the fabric doubler that will go on around the, the lift strut will go over my doily. All right, so I've got a nice layer on here. Full strength, nice and wet. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my doily and I'm going to place that on here. And this is where I want to make sure I get this thing centered. Nicely, that's why I had that drawing on there before. Get this all centered on there nicely. And I like the location of that, it looks pretty even. Now I can go ahead and either take the, the end of the, the paint stir stick and I can go ahead and from the inside here, I'll work outbound. And what I'm really trying to do is just work those bubbles out and you can see the fabric turning green as I rub this in. And I'm just working those edges. And like I said, I can use the end of this stir stick or I can use a squeegee. Either one is fine. Squeegee gets nice and tight inside these edges. And I'm always working outbound. So the pink edges of my doily are being rubbed flat. So I don't wind up pulling any of the edges up. And you can see that the fabric absorbs that glue very nicely and it turns green. I'm not worrying about anything on the surface just yet. Although if I have a big glob at the edge, I want to make sure I get that wiped off because that will be on the surface and could cause some problems later. But since I'm squeegeeing this in, I'm not going to have any thick glue on those edges. Move this this way so you can see a little more clearly. If I were at this point and I realized that my doily was completely off center, not straight, I would just lift it off and either move that doily or grab a different doily and start over. But I've got this on here pretty nice and straight, so I'm happy with that. And I've got my edges fairly tight. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. Again, when, when this is all dried later, we'll come back with some heat and we'll get those locked in. 
Okay, so I've got that first application down. And I'm going to scooch this over just a little tiny bit. That's better. Okay, got that on there the way I want. Again, working out those bubbles, moving them outbound towards the edge of my doily. And I'll just take a dry paper towel here and just make sure I don't have any excess on the surface. And I like that so far. Let me do a quick zoom in so you can see how that looks before we put our final glue application on the top of this. Okay, close up here, you can see it's nice and even. We have a few spots that are still white, that's fine. We're gonna put our final top coat of glue on next to seal that in just like we would on any application of a tape or any second piece of fabric. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that. So all I have to do at this point is go ahead and take my brush. And again, I'm gonna take full strength glue and I'm gonna work from the middle. I like to work from the middle out. This is gonna be a top coating of glue. Whenever you have a top coating of glue, you must do the wipe off with the glue paper towel. If you don't, the rough glue surface that you're leaving will be there permanently and it will show through your Ecofill and through your top coat. You wanna make sure we get this wiped off. And I'm working fairly quickly because I don't want this to set up. And make sure I get the entire surface wet out. And then I'll go ahead and take my paper towel, dry paper towel. And again, from the middle out, grab a new one here. I'm just working the excess glue off, usually about two or three wipes. Don't worry about it going past the edge of your doily. You're gonna be filling the weave with glue in a later step anyway. So that's not gonna be any kind of an issue. And these are quick wipes to get that excess glue off. And I am pretty happy with that. All my edges, I've gone past all the pink edges with the glue, making sure those edges are nicely encapsulated. And I'm nicely centered on my line that I originally drawn, so I'm happy with that. And I can come back here with my squeegee, and if there's any areas I need to work down, I can now. There's a few bubbles here. I'm not gonna worry about those, because in an hour or two, by the time I get the next three or four inspection rings on, I'll come back here and I'll take my iron at about 230 degrees, and that'll be enough to soften the glue and really lock in these edges nice and sharp. Obviously, if you're gonna be cutting out that inside area and putting a dome in there, you need to make sure that those edges are as close together. The two surfaces of, glue, of fabric are as close to that edge of that inspection ring so that when you cut that out, you don't have an open void, you have fabric to fabric. That's basically all there is to putting on an inspection ring. This doily will dry. We'll come back to it in a couple of hours and I'll take the iron at 230 degrees and I'll go around those edges to really lock those in and any areas that it's not quite bonded as tight as I'd like, I can get that with the iron. Typically what I do is I put on one inspection ring, I put in another, another. By the time I get all five done, then this one is all set up and ready for me to go ahead and take the iron and get out any bubbles. After I'm done with the regular inspection rings, then I'll go ahead and do the large ones uh, at the end of the wing where the attachment bolts are going to be, and I'll show you how those will look. They'll basically be the same. It's just that we're doing a square inspection ring made out of aluminum rather than a plastic ring. Let's do a quick walk around. All the doilies are on, all the inspection rings are on. You can see the two ends are done. And as we look kind of close on these, you will see some bubbles on here, which we'll take out with the iron when we get to that next step after this is get a good chance to set up and dry. Looking down the wing, we've got two inspection rings in the center and we've got three down towards the end. 
down here at the lift strut area, you can see the three inspection rings down here. And we can zoom in on one and you can see some of the areas that we'll be hitting with the iron after this has a good chance to dry. And the iron will be set at about 230 degrees and it will bond the top fabric to the bottom fabric just fine to get rid of any areas where it's not bonded as well as we'd like. All right, we've given a chance for these inspection rings to dry. Let's take a look at them up close and see how they look. All right, this is one by one of the lift strut attachment points. And you can see there's a few spots right in here where we can see a little bit of a, a gap or bubble. And we'll hit that with the iron, same thing right along here. And we'll be able to take those edges and tighten those up just fine. And I think we'll find the same thing on the other ones. Uh, back on these two and also on the others. Let's take a look at the big ones at the other end of the wing. All right, these are the two big inspection areas that will be cut open for the main bolts to attach to the wing. And you can see there's a few spots on here. Got a couple little bubbles here and we'll hit those with the iron. And same thing over here on the other one. We got a few spots, not a whole lot. Got a little bit right in here that we'll have to hit with the iron and that will come right on down. Same thing with that. We'll be able to get those bubbles out really easily. So let me go ahead and get the iron and get it set to 230 degrees. And we'll go ahead and iron those out. This is the first ring that we did. And you can see there's a couple of voids, not much on here. I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit in here and uh, just to get rid of those bubbles. But this is bonded really nice to the edge of the inspection ring. When you cut this, you're going to cut this back just a little bit about here so that you've got fabric to fabric. You don't want to cut your inspection ring open so that the edge of the plastic is exposed. You want to keep a little bit of fabric, I'd like to be about a quarter of an inch or so together so that it's really bonded well. I don't have to worry about exposing the edge of that plastic. Here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of my iron and I'm just going to come around like this and slowly work it through and just get any edges that aren't bonded well. Give that iron a chance at this temperature, this 230 degrees, to work those edges in. Nothing really tricky here at all. One thing that's kind of cool is you can take this inside edge and work this. That works nice to get in that inner edge because you've got that concave edge in here. So I can use the top edge, curved edge of the iron to really lock this in there. This particular ring did not have much that needed to be laid down. So that really came out really nice with the minimal effort that I did when I put the inspection ring on. That looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. Nice and sharp. It's all the way to the edge. There really isn't any voids there, any areas where I've got any particular bubbling. Get a little bit more inside here. Nice, nice pronounced edge. You can see how sharp that edge is in there. Pretty happy with that. That one's done, and I'll have a little bit to do on this other one in this area also. You can see on the big ring, there's some areas right here along the edge, same thing. And I'll just start with that with the iron, and I'll just go over that. That lays those down very nicely. like that. A little bit of a bubble here. I'll go ahead and I'll hit that bubble right along the edge here. You see I'm giving the iron enough time to shrink that fabric because there's a little bubble there and to bond that glue. But you can see I'm not getting any transfer onto the surface of the iron. So that's working really well at this temperature. And it's just about hot enough to do the trick do what I want it to do, which is to bond that fabric down. And 
I like the way those bubbles feel. They're gone. Same thing along the edges here. I'll get back on this edge inside here a little bit. Work any bubbles along that edge. And again, there's no transfer onto the iron at this temperature. Works really well. Okay, there's a few bubbles right over in here that you can probably see. We'll take those down. Nice and flat. And we'll do the same thing here. This particular ring, the center area will be cut open and I'll be folding those, this fabric around and gluing it to the wood in the inside. All right, I'm gonna get this back line, back edge again, the inside of the iron. And I'll come back here. All I'm doing is just getting a nice, sharp, pronounced edge between the fabric and the inspection ring itself. And that looks pretty good. I've gone ahead and ironed all the edges that were necessary on all the inspection rings. And for this entire wing, which was five inspection rings in the two big areas, it took me about 20 minutes, not much time at all. Let's take a look at this one. You can see how nice and crisp those edges are. And when those are painted, those are really going to show a nice transition and will be very sharp edge for when we do, if they do have to be cut out later and a dome inserted into that opening. That looks really good. And you can see that's nice and crisp there also. And on the larger of the two, same. The edges are nice and crisp, very sharp, show a lot of good detail. And you can see how that iron really gets that fabric bonded nicely together and gives that really sharp edge, which is the look that I really like. That finishes up the video on installation of inspection rings and doilies. The next step in this particular wing will be the all the tapes that we put on the ribs, perimeter tapes, closing off areas like this around the lift struts. Then the entire wing will be cut, the weave will be filled with EcoBond glue, three parts glue, one part water, and then the Eco Fill will go on top of that before the top coat. So lots more to work on with this particular wing.